Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. I want to talk to you today about a kitchen uh, that me and a friend of mine wired. Um, we did it together. He's a master electrician as well as I am. Uh, the video is May 2019. We did this last month in April. Waited a quite a bit of time, three weeks, to get some 120-volt uh, horn strobes. Um, basically, some of the work you're going to see is not ours. Uh, it's been two, three other electrical contractors that started it and just left. They didn't want to finish it. It took us, um, it was very difficult because it's an old old fire alarm system and it's so ancient that the uh, fire marshal basically said here up in Masonville, Colorado, just go ahead and get 120 volt on them. Um, we had to wire up some Buckeye um, switches that are normally open or normally closed for the Ansel system which basically means um, when a pole station is pulled or one of these heads suppressed, uh, this wall has to go out. All the power, whether it's 208 or 120 volt, um, and then whether it's single phase or three phase, that has to kill. Also has to be GFCI, which we had to do, which was not done. And then the makeup air has to shut off, and then um, the it's dark right now up on the roof, so I can't go up there. But then the swamp coolers have to go off as well. Um, and then we have to keep on the exhaust fans. And the last thing is the lights underneath here have to kill too. And so we got all that wired up. And basically this place is pretty old, but... Uh, so typically it's going to have its on-off switch, the old school way. This new panel is going to turn on here on this side with the lights with this box. And then inside of here, um, a few of your contactors, like a nice cube relay. These are soft coil contact. This is a nice cube relay with these contactors. So this is what's gonna be turning on and off some makeup air, which does this side of the hood. Um, we also have the label in here a lot of the circuits that were mislabeled. And up there is our Buckeye. And so we actually were able, so when this station is a pulse station, it pulls, it releases. And then you have to coil wind this up to get the contact of one and two here to connect. And then once that connects, you reset three and four here. And so once that winds up, it will click and lock. If this releases, this is gonna be your link line. And this goes to your gas valve. And so when that gas valve is tripped, it allows that to come in and through for that suppression. And then your Ansel soap or whatever you want to call it, film is sprayed all over in order to kill the fire, a grease fire or whatnot. Um, a lot of these boxes we did have to create over here. And gave our labeling of what was happening as we brought power through and in. So the next guy can understand what we were doing. Some of this it goes to the upstairs, some of it doesn't. And then up here to the rooftop, we were able to get a conduit out so we could hit our makeup air. The tricky thing about this is that they wanted these two on that big tank I showed you with its own horn strobe. Then this one, consider the kettle, did not have these suppression hits coming down, so they didn't care about this, but it had horn strobe here, so we decided to go ahead and wire that. The tricky part of it was that we were in a second kitchen here. And all of these horn strobes have to go off together with the Buckeye normally open close switch that I showed you on that box. And then same thing, power behind your kills, lights die, this had a makeup air, that dies, and then the exhaust goes on. And so inside here is a contactor. 
that we did. And lastly, Inside by that water fountain is another suppression system, or a tank, you should say. And then here's our third tank, and one more buckeye. And that has to kill this one head. You know, once this is, if the temperature gets too hot, this suppresses, but these lights kill. There is no outlet behind here, but our makeup air is right up above that skylight. And the exhaust as well and that's what will stay on for the exhaust and our horn stroke here with a pole station so that pole station pipes comes over to here and then that is your gas valve so when that's that uh, is triggered your gas valve right there that actually releases and shuts off that gas. So anyways, this was pretty intriguing for basically three kitchens, um, four hoods, four strobes, three Ansel tanks, and up above, I think I already did a video, I did, it was actually a month ago, so if you look for that video on the roof, up there we had um, three swamp coolers, three makeup air, and one heater air combo. So we had seven units that we had to do uh, contacts with 120 volt coils and there were three to four poles and they would kill that makeup air. Um, actually, let's go out here real quick. I think I have enough time. So for us to come in and trace, I took myself and my other friend um, and do the work. We were close to, uh, well, and then also my wife helping me. We were close to 200 hours on this job. It was a mess. And, uh, the fire marshal was going to shut these guys down because it, it'd been two years and they hadn't got it finished. This is one of the AC heater units that had to be killed. This is another swamp cooler had to be killed. Heater, swamp cooler. That's that exhaust with that skylight I was showing you. That exhaust has to stay on. Makeup air has to die, which is a swamp cooler. We even labeled some of these RT units. This is a kettle down there that they said it did not have to die. But that is exhaust, so that's fine. That's exhaust and exhaust. And then two more makeup airs. I already did a video, so you guys should be able to see this. And then in here were our contactors. And so we just simply piped through that old doghouse right there that we saw power going down to because it was gutted a long time ago. I don't know why, but when I found all these conductors coming up here, we jumped on it. Hold on. And we just car flicks through. And that's what interrupted, because over here is a panel for all this stuff. We were able to come down here and label all that. It goes right down to the kitchen where I showed you. So, yeah, anyways, um, that's kind of that the job, and like I said, it's about 200 hours for two of us masters to get this done, and then my wife jumped in about three days, and my daughter about a day, so. Um, but yeah, I mean, these were, I love these kind of jobs, really hard and difficult, um, but tricky, and definitely learned a lot under my friend who's done a lot more kitchens than I have. But uh, yeah, if you've had anything this difficult, let me know, because normally I think it's just one hood or maybe two, but this was uh, three kitchens, four hoods. Thanks guys for joining us. Uh, have a good day.